Fabian, what are your main impressions and experiences you bring back from Norway to Israel with you? I must say that they are mixed, but they are definitely plentiful, both positive and negative. I will start with the beauty of Norway, both the place and the people. It's the most beautiful place I've ever been to. Uh, the friendliness of the people, generosity, willingness to help others who are less fortunate. But as an Israeli, and as an Israeli diplomat, after five years here, I'm fully aware that uh, as they teach us in the Bible, even in paradise, there was a snake. There is a paradox, really, for some reason, in Norway. On the one hand, an obsessive, almost compulsive coverage of Israel, the Middle East, and the conflict. On the other hand, which is quite amazing, I must say, level of knowledge amongst Norwegians is uh, relatively low. So this is the paradox. There is a gap between the reality in Israel and in the Middle East and its image here. What, in your opinion, are the most important parts that Norwegians don't get to know about Israel? When you, as a media person, as an academic, as a politician, keep zooming in on one piece of a huge puzzle, which the Middle East is, and you never zoom out. It is inevitable, in my opinion, that a bias will occur. So what do you think, uh, as an Israel, Israel diplomat in Norway, what is the most, what is the hardest part? The hardest part is to see your country uh, mispresented, especially in the public debate, especially by the mainstream media, as if Israel is not a democratic country, the only one in the Middle East, as if Israel is not the most stable place in the Middle East, as if, as if Israel is not a wonderful success story, uh, economically speaking culturally, scientifically. But again, as, I, as I've said before, uh, this is the price you pay as a, a so-called expert when you keep presenting Israel in a one or two dimensional ways. Only the conflict. Israel is so much more beyond the conflict. And one would expect that with all this obsessive, almost compulsive interest and coverage of Israel, that the other facets of Israel would and should be included. Uh, so I believe this is a major problem. However, and this is something I wanted to say before, I think that one of the most damaging things for uh, Norway and the experts is that there is hardly ever a serious debate. There is one dominant narrative that basically is adopting the Arab or the Palestinian narrative and overlooking almost totally or completely the Israeli narrative. And we are also a side in the conflict, so I think it's a mistake. What do you consider as a possible a pos positive uh, things that have happened, uh, developments and so on? Absolutely. As you can guess, especially because of some very sad, almost tragic calls to boycott Israel, one of my greatest joys was during the five years to see Norwegians who are interested in cooperating with their Israeli counterparts. If it is in the field of business, if it's in the field of culture. Because 
I firmly believe that this is the way, this is the correct way. You don't have to agree. You can debate. You can even criticize, as long as the criticism is fair. But the most important thing is to engage with the Israeli people and to see what wonderful things can come out. And I will give a few examples. Uh, in 2008, when Norway was saluted, saluting Henrik Verbilan, our embassy joined him. And an Israeli composer uh, wrote a special piece, a piece, a musical piece, saluting Henrik Verbilan and his contribution to making it possible for Jews to come to Norway. Uh, this wonderful a piano clarinet piece uh, was performed in Norway, in the city where Bergeland was born in Christian Sun, in October 2008, by a wonderful duo, the Brill and Air duo. The reaction was so heart-touching. And we even produced an album. It was totally ignored by the mainstream media, which is a pity. Because this was our humble way to salute the great man like Henry Bergman. The Shani Choir just visited Norway last May, this May. Performed in four Norwegian cities. Was received very enthusiastically, as it deserves. Total, totally being ignored by the mainstream media, despite of the fact that in both cases, Shani Choir's too, and Ferdinand's Bloms, we have approached the media. So, I believe, also in light of the huge interest that Israeli modern dance is receiving in Norway, in Stavanger, in Berlin, in Oslo, in Bau, that the potential is so big, not only in the field of culture, in the field of uh, acad academia, in the field of business. High tech, research. Entrepreneurship, research, development, 